Devin Haney says it is crazy when he looks at the ESPN current pound for pound top 10 list and he sees that he's not on it. This is in response to head of Showtime, Steven Espinoza, and his recent tweet. I will talk about all these things in boxing. Buckle up. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live boxing ego. Unpack. Yeah. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego in the back with some more boxing gang gang. Please come in and smash the like button. I am back. I am back with my original segment, Boxing Ego Unpacked, where I take my time and take as much time as needed to unpack the issues that matter the most at a given time in the world of boxing. And I'm the best that's ever done it. Now, I made a video, Showtime's Steven Espinoza. He released a tweet where he was flabbergasted at ESPN's most current, current most pound for pound rankings. And he poses a question that you guys will see on the screen. There are currently three, one, two, three, undisputed four belt men's world champions. And the only one on the list is one who just lost. Now, obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand Steven Espinoza of Showtime that works closely with PBC Premier Boxing Champions. He took a look at this list and he's referring to none other than Canelo Alvarez. Bebe, you want Bebe? I know that. Canelo begged for the Mexican dates. He hails from Guadalajara, Mexico, and he got the Mexican dates and he just lost on the recent Mexican date, Cinco de Mayo, and that was at light heavyweight to Dimitri Bivo. Not only was it a loss, in my opinion, it was a tragic loss. It really set Canelo back a few paces, but more on that as we proceed through this video. Steven Espinoza released this tweet and Devin Haney, he chimed in. Clearly he's seen it. He was on social media or whatnot, and he says, it is crazy, Steven. It is crazy. And you guys see that on the screen. Now, I concur and agree with both of these gentlemen, Showtime and also Devin Haney. Now, the sad thing is you have a guy, even though Steven Espinoza didn't actually say Devin Haney or Jamel Charlo, that's clearly who he's referring to two black American fighters, but only one of those fighters is aligned with Showtime and PBC, the company Showtime works with, which is Premier Boxing Champions. So it's pretty sad that Devin Haney was working with Eddie Hearn, as we know, and he was previously on DAZN platform, the DAZN streaming app, and He took a plunge, a leap of faith. Him and his dad, his dad has done a great shout out to Bill Haney, done an amazing job of motivating and cultivating this career with his son and just, you know, being a part of the team, being solid and making sure his son got the proper paychecks and treatment in the world of boxing. But the sad part about it is Devin Haney was fighting on DAZN and an opportunity presented itself since Lomachenko elected to stay at home during times of war, during times of invasion, and he decided to stay at home to fight for his country or or just to be on standby in case something pop off, you know, and you got to respect that. But in doing so, Bob Arum came out and said that the Lomachenko and George Cambosos fight was a done deal. That was already sewed up. And the only reason Devin Haney was afforded the opportunity just like some of his other previous fights where joseph jojo diaz that wasn't his initial option to fight devin haney devin haney and bill haney they were fighting for these things they were like give us the opportunity jojo diaz was going to fight on a golden boy card staples center against ryan garcia 
So Devin, I'm not going to say lucked out because I don't necessarily believe in luck. I think luck is preparedness and preparation meets opportunity, you know? So I don't, I'm not going to say it's luck. Devin Haney called for these moments and he was available at the right place at the right time when these other fights fell out. But the sad thing is Showtime has nothing to do with Devin Haney's current career at the moment. And you got Steven Espinoza who's taking up for him. Meanwhile, he left the zone and left Eddie Hearn to pursue this deal because Lomachenko, in lieu of Lomachenko not being available anymore for Cambosos, and he signed a multi-fight deal. I believe it's three fights, two or three fights, Devin Haney signed to ESPN, and you got ESPN as a company who can't even show the dignity and the decency to create a pound for pound list that showcases all the talent in boxing, including somebody who took this blind leap of faith and went overseas across the pond, had several obstacles like his dad, his cut man couldn't get into the country. They were trying to, you know, ban them based on old legal troubles from the 90s, things like that. And despite doing all of these things, this is how ESPN decides to repay a black American fighter who took the gamble, went to Australia. Not only did he go there, he made it painstakingly clear that he was on another level and he was the better man beating George Cambosos in a dominant fashion over 12 rounds. And you got Showtime. I mean, what world do we live in where you got Showtime and they have to go to bat for fighters that really ain't even all, all there. So I give a lot of props to Devin Haney and I get a lot of props to Steven Espinoza because they're at least standing for something. You know, Devin took the risk and as, as I mentioned earlier, he went over to Australia, he did the damn thing and beat Cambosos, abandoned his old promoter and situation, took the short money up front. And this is how he gets repaid by old media. This is how he gets paid by ESPN.com's men's pound for pound ranking. And it's wrong. And then, like I said, what type of world do we live in where you got the head of Showtime, which really has no allegiance to anybody else? Like, keep in mind, DAZN specifically, Eddie Hearn, he takes any opportunity he can to try to trash other people's shows. Randomly, Eddie Hearn made an interview and he said, Canelo Alvarez Triple G3 is 10 times bigger than Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. I don't know where he got this information. It's not bigger to me. Um, I don't have an interest, a keen interest, even watching Canelo Golovkin 3 like that. But I am all eyes, all hands on deck for Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, but not to get too distracted in this particular video. The point I'm making is that Eddie Hearn proves that when you're promoting your own product, the competition is, is not your priority. They're not your ally. And, you know, you see Steven Espinosa being the bigger person here and questioning the infrastructure with ESPN like, yo, how do we have, we're in the four belt era, 2022, and two people that are American champions undefeated. Well, actually, Jermail Charlo's not undefeated, but you could argue he's undefeated because some people didn't have him losing to Tony Harrison. But I digress. You got two talented fighters who are undisputed in some of the most popping divisions. I would say the most popping divisions currently in boxing Right now, 135 is extremely hot, extremely hot. And you have uh, 154 and 147. Those are probably the most consistently, in recent memory, pretty stacked divisions where you've seen a lot of stars in or around those divisions. And you got someone from Showtime going to bat for a fighter that he doesn't even represent. And also Jamel Charlo, which I've made several videos about Jamel Charlo. What they're doing to him is bad. This is not about if you like Jermail Charlo, if you like Jamal Charlo, if you like Lions Only. None of that sh matters. At the end of the day, right is right. The dude can fight. And that's what boxing should be about. And there's a lot of people who are being outed in the world of boxing for these bias and pound for pound lists that make no sense. It's like you're trying your best 
to obstruct a quality list and keep certain people on the list for whatever reason. Maybe you don't want a melanated list. I don't I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section exactly what the reason is because it looks stupid. For example, on ESPN's list in at number 9, you have Vasil Lomachenko. Okay, so Vasil Lomachenko doesn't have 20 fights. This is a fact. Not even encompassing 20 fights, he's 30 something years old. Even more so, he has two losses with under 20 fights. I don't care what he did as an amateur because you're not, how can you rank somebody for a current pound for pound men's list in 2022 based on some ish they did in the amateurs? That makes no sense. There's guys like Audley Harrison and he has a gold medal and he got knocked out in one round by Deontay Wilder, Deontay the Bronze Bumble Wilder from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh my God. He got knocked out in his backyard because they were in the UK. Wilder knocked him out in one round. Further proof, if you needed some, that what you do in the amateurs literally has nothing to do with the pro. Now, I'm not saying that to say, like if I was signing fighters and I was building a stable, yeah, you would definitely look for people who had a decorated amateur career because it's experience, but it's not a telltale sign as to who will be successful. Errol Spence did not medal, and he's one of the biggest stars in all of boxing. Javante Davis does have a good amateur record, but a lot of people don't know that, and that's not why they currently follow him. They're following him based on stuff they know. Javante Davis got over 200 and something amateur fights with not that many losses, but a lot of people don't even know that. They know Tanks, the, he's a star, and he's bringing the stars out, and you know he's synonymous with the culture, et cetera. So this shouldn't be a list about who you like and, you know, oh, I don't like Jam Jamil's attitude because Jamil Charlo cussed out one of the reporters for ESPN. And I've already made videos about this. It is up to you as a fan to get the news. The news, I put it out every single day on my channel. They can't outwork me, so it's up to you. In the last 30 days, I looked at my YouTube analytics and it showed me 50% of the people that watched my content last month in the world of boxing subscribe. So thank you. That really helps to grow the channel organically, which is what I like. The other 50%, that means you guys didn't. Let me know what I could do to earn your subscription on YouTube. It's a free platform. I drop boxing content. This is your one-stop shop for all your boxing needs. All access, boxing news, 24 7 live streams watch parties you name it so at the end of the day make sure you guys subscribe it helps for my channel to extend and reach a further audience and attract new viewers when you show those engagement signs subscribing is is one of the big ones and also hitting the like button and leaving comments very very sad to see that devin haney and the likes of jermail charlo black american champions or just american champions or just great fighters whatever you want to label them as get treated like this in the world of boxing again number nine you have vasil lomachenko let me give you a quick backstory lomachenko has less than 20 fights he's 30 something years old 34 and he lost to teofimo lopez who had his first he and teofimo beat him clearly lomachenko didn't do enough in the early rounds Gave up like six rounds and clearly lost to Teofimo Lopez, right? Teofimo did a good thing and beat him clearly. Then in Teofimo's very first title defense at home, he says he's a New Yorker. He fought in New York after some hiccups with Triller, but I don't want to get into that. He fought at home and got dropped in the first round and he got dominated by George Cambosos. So the belt changed hands. Then George Cambosos, the same thing, the same exact fate that happened to Teofimo losing at home in your first title defense, the same exact thing happened at the hands of a black American fighter, the undefeated Devin Haney, an American star, right? 
He went over to Australia against all odds. We knew, like some people said, oh, Devin, I don't know if he has the power to hurt or stop Cambosos, so he's going to get robbed on the scorecards. But Devin Haney cleaned up his work. He crossed his T's and dotted his I's, and he left nothing to the imagination and boxed a poised and composed fight where you couldn't take it away from him. It's, it's very similar and analogous to Russian fighter Dmitry Bivo. Dmitry Bivo beat Canelo so handedly and thoroughly and seemingly easily. You can't really rob him because what, what rounds are you going to allegedly try to give a person who the whole world is watching them round after round get punished and outboxed and things like that? So congratulations to Bivo and congratulations to Devin Haney. Both of them executed a very smart game plan and they stuck with what was working. Devin Haney, there was no reason for him to overextend himself. The only way Cambosos had a way back into the fight at the later rounds was by knockout. He would have to knock Devin Haney down a gang of times or force a stoppage, a TKO, knockout, or whatever. So in the world of boxing, you gotta capture the W. You're in enemy territory and it's about winning. Winning is everything. There's a lot of people, we live in such a PC society, people want to deliver false messages and bad information. Winning is everything. You get celebrated when you achieve, when you win. But since we live in a PC society, people try to hand out participation trophies, which is very detrimental to society because that's not real life. And if we live in this um, fake world where everything is one in the same and you know thing everything in life is not equal there are some people they're going to place higher on tests or an aptitude test or they're better students that's just the reality of it you can't act like the valedictorian or the scholastic academic student who should be in the gate programs and all the advanced learner programs is performing the same way as somebody who's a d or f student that's just the reality so i don't understand why people attempt to hand over these participation trophies but back to devin haney it's very sad his own new network this is how they roll out the red carpet for him he does a great thing he wins he leaves nothing to even the espn commentators who outside of andre ward i personally find to be insanely off and insanely biased right even they had no choice but to just admit that Devin Haney clearly won so why is he not being celebrated how and it goes to show you what can you do in order to make the pound for pound list if you can go to a guy's backyard beat him every single round dominate him leave nothing to the imagination don't get hurt in the fight Devin Haney got hurt versus Jorge Linares a former champion and didn't get hurt versus George Cambosos and now it's supposed to be the most dangerous fight because he was on enemy turf and all this momentum that Cambosos had so tell me what does a black fighter do in the world of boxing to get recognized by old media where Jamel Charlo can come back avenge a close close fight that previously ended in a draw and Devin Haney can go overseas be without his dad for most of his his acclimation time where he was out there be without his cut man dominate not make any excuses and he still can't get on the list of the network that showcased the fight i mean this is this is insane but then lomachenko can have two losses and not even have 20 fights and espn is going out of their way to cover it up they, they did multiple graphics, on-screen graphics, on previous telecasts, and it said that Lomachenko was undefeated. Canelo Alvarez can come directly off of a loss, and he still gets to, to be placed in the top five, right? But they don't want to make room for other people. You got to, listen, boxing is a great sport if you allow it to be great. You, you can't base, you can't base your, your list on what you want it to be more than what it is. And if we have a four belt era and you got all these guys who are, who are doing, it's not even like they're fighting. Actually, to be honest, Canelo had the weakest undisputed run, more so than Devin Haney and more so than Jermail Charlo. Canelo had the weakest. And I would challenge anybody, 
in the comment section, you know, to argue that Canelo had the weakest run, right? And he's still on the top five pound for pound list, and he just got beat up by Bevel. But Shakur, they want to place him last. They want to keep Lomachenko on the list. Why? How? What do you have to do to, to be removed? If you can lose within your last three fights, and then there's people who aren't losing, and they just keep winning, and they're winning all the belts, I mean, it's not making sense. How do you have to see more? How do you have to, oh, I need to see more from Jamel Charlo? He's in a stacked division with all the belts, and he just cleaned up his work from the first Castano fight. Devin Haney went overseas, like I've said throughout this video, and he did the damn thing, and he beat a guy and made the guy look completely different than he looked versus Camboso. So why is Showtime a whole separate network? They're the ones vouching for fighters that aren't even theirs and one of the fighters that is theirs, Charlo and Devin Haney. I mean, this is ridiculous. And old media and ESPN, they're trying to say, oh, the list is subjective. But there's a difference, like I said in the previous video, there's a difference between subjective and subjectivity and stupidity. Like there has to be some type or element of rules to this. Like you look at, let's say Shaquille O'Neal. We'll start with a basic analogy. Let's say Shaquille O'Neal. The average man, let's say is 5'8". 5'9". Shaquille O'Neal is substantially larger than that at over seven feet tall. So if you ask any reasonable person, they're going to say Shaquille O'Neal is well above average height. That's not subjective. If we've established as a society that the average man is 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and you see this guy who's a gargantuan and 300 plus pounds or whatever, seven feet tall, it's not really subjective at that point. It is what it is. Shaquille O'Neal is huge. I've stood next to Shaquille O'Neal. I interviewed him as he was leaving at the Javante Davis fight. He's he's a big guy. And anybody who's reasonable, like, okay, there's could be someone who's taller than him. That doesn't change the fact that anybody with a reasonable brain is going to say that Shaquille O'Neal is big. So why is it so hard? And why is this level of subjectivity so subjective? You know, in the world of boxing where I see top talent in Errol Spence and Jermail Charlos and Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson, but old media is like, ah, Shakur can't really make this list. Like he's not on the Ring Magazine list or we're going to put him last. Why is Shakur last on the ESPN list and Lomachenko is second to last. What has Lomachenko done other than lose two times in less than 20 fights to be over Shakur Stevenson in 2022? Mind you, Shakur and Devin Haney both said they will fight Lomachenko. Let's see if they make that fight. That's what I got to say. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I mean, it's just straight BS is cap. I'm going to continue to bang out the facts. And that's just that. Subscribe. We unpack coming to you live. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy, 
I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.